morning, everybody, and hopefully you've now got a decent UI and understand why your UI should be set out that way. Now we're going to tackle step two, key binding. Key binding. <sighs> Every time we bring it up, there's always the defense, the excuses as to why not being key binded is okay. However, historically, in the history of ever, no one has ever gone back. Lots of people have gone from clicking to key binding. No one has gone from key binded to clicking. There's a reason for that. Key binding is just flat out objectively better. But a lot of people fuck it up. A huge amount of people fuck it up, including my own family. Somebody in my own family has been trying to learn how to key bind for years and screwed it up. So why do we do that? First of all, let's talk about the problem with key binding. People try and do it all at once. That's just a massive mistake that's going to fall on your face. You're going to have a big problem because it's not only about remembering that lightning bolt is one. It's about teaching your fingers. Start teaching your muscle memory. And muscle memory is going to be a massive part of what we're going to do through this process, okay? You've got to remember that if you try and just say, go through your key binding list and just stick a key, a, a binding to absolutely everything, and then maybe even practice on a target dummy, you might feel you're going to be okay, but once you get into an actual gameplay scenario, you're going to screw it up. But believe me, for the naysayers out there, being key binded is just so, so much better. Let's go. So, key binding, and believe me, I've already seen it from the first video. Don't check the comment sections for the guys who've already been through this process and consider you a complete scrub if you've not mastered this yet. We all had to go through this at some point, but I kind of taught people this about five years ago, and it took three videos and people still didn't quite get it. And I believe I went about it in the totally wrong way. So hopefully I'm going to fix that for you today. A big thing that people ask is like, can I have your key bindings, Preacher? No, it wouldn't make sense to you at all. It really wouldn't. Key bindings are super personal and it's all about, this is what people think key binding is, right? And this is why people fail at trying to do this. A lot of people have tried it and fail it, is you're trying to th think of what you need to do. So let's say on my Frost Mage, right? I need to cast Frost Bolt. That is one, then I need to look at my keyboard or I need to know where one is on my keyboard, right? That's too long. It doesn't work that way. That's not how keybinding actually functions. It's like it's like the practical process, but when you're actually keybinded, you'll you're just gonna go frostbolt is this, right? And it's it's this muscle memory. You want to do frostbolt and your your body it will instantly react by doing this motion. And that's how we that's where we need to get to is you're thinking as the game goes on what you want to do and your body and your hand will respond accordingly. Now you have to teach your hands to do that. That's where it comes unstuck because first mistake people make is key binding too many things at once. And there's no doubt about it for the first couple of days, probably like three or four days, you're going to be slower than what you're used to, which would be clicking, right? You're going to be slower because you're going to do things like look at your keyboard. You're going to be like, what do I need to press here? Oh God, I need to do things rather quickly and, and it comes unstuck. The second thing people do wrong is they practice at say a training dummy. It doesn't work. And it doesn't work because as soon as there's something else going on in the environment that you have to move from and do things like that is you're gonna default back to what you feel comfortable with. Now there's no doubt about this is that it's gonna take some force. I'm gonna take my watch off and show you what's going on here. <coughs> we can make it easier. So in order to get key binded, you need to start small. You need to start really small. You need to start with like three or four things, right? So the way the game works is you have usually a longer, a longer spell cooldown, something like six or seven seconds. Then you have a filler spell. Then you have DPS cooldowns. And then generally speaking, you have one other spell on top of that. Now I want to show you pretty clearly, if I was to, I'm on my Frost Mage now, right? So here's our notepad. If I was to write down my opener, <laughs> right, uh, or the opener I've used for a long time, I don't really play Frost anymore, but you get the idea. So it'd be something like, Frost Mage is going to freak out now because it's a variation on the opener. Ooh, uh, it would look something like this. Shift R, right? I would do Even Bolt, right? And then I'm going to use my cooldowns, which are going to be mouse button, I'm just going to call it two. And then at the, at the exact same time as I press those cooldowns, I'm gonna press I'm gonna press flurry. <laughs> I'm gonna press flurry. That is shift two. Right? Then I'm gonna use ice lance, which is one. Then I'm probably gonna use frozen orb, which is mouse one. 
And then I'm probably going to do either Ice Lance or Frost Bolt. So I'm going to do Ice Lance or Frost Bolt. Which is either going to be one or two. Now, I have to do this in the space of about three seconds. Right? I have to do all those things in the space of three seconds. So if I try to teach someone that in order to do a Frost Opera, it's going to be Shift R, Mouse 2, Shift 2, 1, 1, Mouse 1. Then maybe you're going to press 1 or 2. Nobody's going to be able to learn that. Nobody in a million years is going to be able to do that. Like from there, because they're going to be like, shift, ah, shift, then my mouse, then this come back to there, and it all falls apart, and you go back to exactly what you want to do. Now, you might be asking yourself, Preach, why are your key binding so crazy? Uh, these make well, shift, ah, what's this? And that's because I've been key binded for like 10 years, and the game changes spells, but my muscle memory is tied into whatever the key binding was at the time when that spell was introduced to the game. And when I think of that spell, that's what my hand does. So me changing this wouldn't make any difference. I could make it more convenient from like a logical perspective, which is like, well, why don't you change that to three? Right? So if we actually come back to the game, you can see Even Bolt is actually my third spell and it's Shift R. And interestingly enough, number three for me is to use a Vantus Rune. Because three used to be something else in the game. And when Even Bolt was in the game, it, I made it Shift R because I find Shift R relatively convenient to press. But that changes with the game. This is why you can't take someone else's uh, key bindings and just introduce them to yourself. But you can make it easier. Some things you should definitely consider, uh, if you, especially if you've got a couple of specs, is to do similar functions on the same key binding. Because then, when your thought process isn't, I need to press, say, counter spell. When your thought process is interrupt, it's always the same no matter what spec you're on. So for me, it's E. So E is my interrupt. You can see it's going off there. E is interrupt for me. Now, if it doesn't matter what spec I was to switch to. If I was to log out of my mage and go to any other class, interrupt is always E, universally across the board. And what I've trained my brain to do is when I want to interrupt a spell, my brain and my hand do exactly the same one. It's E again right it's e it's always e and you'll notice that if i have a variation of an interrupt it's shift e because i'm still doing the same motion i'm just adding shift into it right it's exactly the same i've trained this finger to respond to the thought process of interrupting in that way and this cuts out a lot of the slack <clears throat> now what would i recommend you guys start with and believe me this one step we have another video coming tomorrow and the one the day after this one step might take you some people it could take up to a month just to learn the first four or five key bindings because we're not learning to associate a key press like a number or a letter with what we're trying to do here we're actually trying to train our hand to do this so i would recommend that you pick say four spells so for me it would be ice lance frost bolt even bolt my cooldowns and a frozen orb that would be it that would be it to get started and i'd force yourself you have to do this you have to force yourself. That doesn't mean you have to like make yourself look an ass. Go into the LFR. Go into World Quest, right? This opener that I just typed out, I can do it with my hand without thinking about it, right? That's how I do it. And it looks crazy, but that's the button presses. But the fact of the matter is, if I go into LFR, the Daily Heroic to get my legendary upgrades, or the World Quest, or something like that, I'm going to be doing this opener over and over again, very quickly, 30 or 40 times, right? I'm going to do it 30 or 40 times and gradually you keep, you'll start slow, but then gradually you'll upgrade to be able to do it, right? And you can see how fast this stuff goes. Now, what I've not mentioned here is whether or not key binding or anything is, is better than clicking. Yeah, it is. It's just considerably better, especially in the world of Warcraft, where, uh, where haste and things lower your global cooldown. So again, as we are doing the basics, the global cooldowns, when I press a spell, you can see all a lot most of my spells go on cooldown. That's the global cooldown. All right? It's it, the game locks you out from pressing another spell or another ability for the most part. But haste lowers this down and specs have become faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and clicking makes mistakes. And going back to what we did on the UI video, you might remember that if your gaze is down here because you're clicking, again, that's making you worse up here. It's making you worse up here with looking at things because your your vision and your gaze is down on these abilities. Because you've got to, if you're clicking, you have to physically watch where things are going. Like it's very hard to do. <laughs> it's very once you've learned to keybind, believe me, uh, it's very hard to do. Don't rush this process. 
But let me tell you the great things about it. Let me tell you the great things about it and why you should do this. Don't rush it. Spend a couple of weeks, right? Don't think, I think I've got this. I'm going to add another four onto it because very quickly you're going to break down. You're just going to fall apart and it's not going to work. You've got to take your time. You've got to let it happen naturally and feel that you know what's going on. Once you feel you're at the process where you can think about what you want to press, right, without having to look at what's going on at the, the keyboard or anything, I can play my character without looking, right, for the most part. And a lot of people think that's real cheesy when I've said it in tanking is that you can do that. Like, I can just do it. I don't have to think about it. And that's what happens once you're fully keybinded because you're reacting so quickly and you'll react to procs and stuff. Take your time. Got to teach your hand. You've got to teach this muscle memory. It takes practice to do that. It's not about remembering where Frostbolt is or where Interrupt is or anything like that and going, all right, it's E and then it's two. And then you're going through that process. It's not, it's just, I know where my hand goes and my hand will do it without me thinking. It becomes like a secondary thing to react to that. Practice, practice, practice. Then when you're fully comfortable with those spells, what you'll find happens is it's super easy to start adding things to it. You don't even really need to think about it. But again, don't go overboard because you are adding new things and you've got to train your fingers where to go. Uh, to make sure you stick with the same keyboard for a while, Jesus Christ. You can swap keyboards relatively easily, you'll just get used to it. But generally, try to stick to the same keyboard when you do this. The other advantage is this is once you've gone through this process once, right? Once you've gone through this process once, you will apply it to every game you play. Every single game you play, you'll just be better at. This isn't just getting better at WoW. You will be better every single game you play. And that's a good thing, all right? So this is a long thing for those of you who are still clicking. It's a long process. Take your time. Practice. There's loads of places in WoW where you can go and make mistakes, and it's not a big deal. If you keep finding yourself drifting back to, I need to go back and click, lower the amount of keybinded spells. Just lower the amount until you're comfortable with it. Even if you have to like go down to like two, right? Which is just like frost. Like for me, it'd be frostbolt and ice lance. You have to go back to mortal strike and colossus smash, right? Whatever it is on your spell, on your spec, it doesn't matter. But make sure those are the ones that you're doing. So you're just training this hand. Yeah, it's frostbolt. This is the motion. If I put this hand on my keyboard in the right place, it's gonna start frostbolting. That's just the way it's going to do, because that's that's what I do to press that button. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. I have another video tomorrow, but please take your time with this. Go through it once. You'll be so much better. Bye-bye.